Hello students, it's me again, Mr. Emmanuel, welcoming you to your new class. In this introductory class, we will be refreshing our memories on measure of dispersion. But in this class, we will be looking at for group data. You will recall that we say a measure of dispersion is a value that tests how a set of data converge towards a representative value. And the measures of dispersion include the mean, median, and mode. So first, what is group data? Group data are data that we form by aggregating observations of a variable such that the frequencies of these groups can be used for convenient summarizing and analyzing of the data. Let's look at this example. In this set of data, we can choose to list all the observations and their frequencies beside them. But let's group them for better summarizing and analyzing. So I have chosen to group them into three. The first group is from 0 to 3. The second group is from 4 to 7. And the last group is from 8 to 10. Three groups. Now, in calculating the frequency, you would recall how we use the tally. So whenever you see a number that is between 0 to 2, you put a stroke. Then when your strokes are up to 4, the fifth one is placed across it to make a bundle. So how many numbers between 0 to 3 can you find? That is, how many zeros, how many 1 and how many 2s? Do your counting. I can count 12. So we have a frequency of 12. Next. How many numbers do we have between 3, between 4 and 7? That is, how many 4s, how many 5s, how many 6s, and how many 7s? As you count, you represent them with strokes. When you get to a bundle, you put, it, you put a fifth one across. Here, in this class, we have 10 of those numbers. And in the last class, 8 to 10, we have 8 observations. You see that this table gives a very interesting and easy summary of the initial 30 observations that we have earlier. This is an example of a group data. Now, to prepare the mean or to calculate mean for a grouped data, our formula is the summation fx, which is summation of the frequency times the x, our midpoint, divided by summation f. You will recall that we say a mean, or the arithmetic mean, is the average of a set of data. Now let's look at this example. In this example, they have given us the class intervals and their frequencies. So the first thing to do is to get the midpoint for each of those observations. How do we go about this? You're going to add the lower boundary of the class interval and the upper boundary of the class interval. One plus five for the first observation that gives us six divided by two that gives three that's how we get three as the midpoint for the second class we will add six plus ten that gives us sixteen divided by two gives us eight so when you follow that pattern through the end the next step is to multiply the frequencies times the midpoint that we have gotten. That gives us fx 
that is f times x so for the first one we have 1 times 3 which gives us 3 for the second we have 2 times 8 which gives us 16 down to the last one 7 times 28 clear and simple now when this is done we are going to add all our fx together and all our f together when we sum it up we have summation fx and summation f and the last step is to divide our summation fx divided by summation f that's 506 divided by 27 so our final answer is 18.7 well done our next measure of dispersion is the median the median is the number that stands in the middle of a set of data when the data is arranged chronologically for group data to get our median we use the formula l1 plus open brackets n divided by 2 minus fb close the bracket c divided by f l1 is the lower class interval of our median class n is the total number of observations fb is the cumulative frequency before the median class c is the interval between each classes and finally f is the frequency of the median class so you see first in solving any question we need to do two things First is to get the median class and to create the class interval. So let's use the data we used in our previous example. First, we create the class interval and this is done to close the gaps that would be between the end of the first class and the beginning of the next class. If you look at our data, it looks like there is no gap between 5 and 6 but actually there are about 10 gaps in there we could have 5.1 5.2 all through to 5.9 so we need to close this gap that's what the class interval does to do that quickly we had 5 plus 6 that is 5 that ended the first class plus 6 that started the next class divided by 2 that gives us 5.5 when we do that for all other classes we have a new set of class intervals you see that in this set there are no gaps that are left behind the next step is to create a cumulative frequency you will recall that a cumulative frequency is the addition of the frequency of a class to the frequencies of all classes or observations before it. When we have done that, the next step is to get our median class. Just like you are creating or getting your median position from group data, our median position here is also n divided by 2. That is the total number of observations divided by 2. That is for this question 27 divided by 2 which gives us 13.5 now the next step is to look at which class our median position falls in you would see that it falls within where we have a cumulative frequency of 14 and the class is between 15.5 and 20.5 so let's pick out all the parameters that we need. The lower class interval of our median class is 15.5. N, of course, is 27. FB, the cumulative frequency before our median class is 9. C is the interval between our class interval. That is, we can pick any of the class intervals. So 
I'm picking our median class. The interval is 20.5 minus 15.5, which gives us 5. If you try using any other classes, you would also get 5. And finally, our F frequency of our median class is 5. So let's put this into our formula. L1, that is 15.5 plus, open the brackets, 27 divided by 2 minus 9, close the brackets, 5 divided by 5. Remember, you have to use board mass in solving this. So let's do what is in the bracket first. That is 27 divided by 2, which is 13.5 minus 9, which gives us 4.5. So we multiply 4.5 times 5 divided by 5. Then you had your answer 215.5. Our mode, our median is 20. Quite simple, isn't it? Next, we move on to our mode. Our mode is the observation that has the highest frequency. For a group data, we use the formula L plus D1 divided by D1 plus D2 in a bracket C. L or L1 is the lower class interval of the modal class. D1 is the difference between the frequency of the modal class and the frequency of the class before it. D2 is the difference between the frequency of the modal class and the frequency after it. And C remains our class interval. So let's also solve this using our existing data. So let's pick that out. If you look at this data, our modal class that has the highest frequency has the frequency of 7. So the lower class interval there is 25.5. D1 is the difference between the frequency of that class and the frequency before it. That is 7 minus 6, which gives us 1. D2 is the difference between the frequency of our modal class and the frequency after it. In this case, we don't have a frequency after it. So our D2 is 7 minus 0, which gives us 7. And our class interval remains 5. So let's put these figures into our formula. 25.5 plus open bracket, 1 divided by 1 plus 7, close the bracket, 5. Of course, we solve what is in the bracket first. 1 divided by 8, then times 5. Then you had that to 25.5. That gives us 26.125. It's been an interesting class, and I believe at the end of this lesson, you can prepare the mean, median, and mode for both grouped and ungrouped data. It's been a nice time with you. See you all in the next class. Bye.